Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through a particular exercise that is going to, from exam question actually, that's gonna allow me to illustrate the scale effect and the substitution effect in the context of the labor market using labor demand and labor supply curves. So this is particularly, particularly interesting for the Stevenson and Wolfers text, but probably interesting to those studying the labor market more generally. So suppose we observe an increase in wages and a decrease in employment in the automobile industry. Which of the following could explain this outcome? Without going any further, if we have an increase in wages and a decrease in, 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 in employment, we are going to expect we need to have a leftward shift of the labor supply curve, right? Think about supply and demand shift, shift supply leftward. That's going to give us a higher price and a lower quantity, right? The higher price because now whatever is being supplied is more scarce. Higher, more scarcity means the price has to rise and then there's going to be fewer units around and so we're going to have a lower uh, lower quantity. Well, in this market, the price is wages and employment is going to be whichever is smaller of the quantity demanded and quantity supplied. It's the jobs that are filled, right? Okay, so our options are a recession reduces the demand for new cars and wages in the aircraft manufacturing industry decrease. This is something separate. So here's one effect, here's another thing. The cost of capital used in the production of automobiles increases and the scale effect dominates the substitution effect. We'll explore that. The Xbox One and PlayStation 4 hit the market, causing a significant increase in the value placed on leisure among automobile manufacturing workers. Automobile firms adopt a new production technique that increases the marginal productivity of its workers. And then more of one of the above could explain the outcome. All right, so let's check. First, what's the relevance of the scale effect and the substitution effect in this market? Well, we observe workers and machines work together, sometimes as complements, sometimes as substitutes. There's a scale effect in that when the price of capital goods or other inputs decline, the business produces outputs more cheaply. So it expands its production, produces a greater output, you sell a larger quantity. With production taking place on a larger scale, this requires more workers and therefore increases the labor demand. So this is scale effect is like if workers and capital are like complements. There's a substitution effect. In the case of tasks that can be accomplished by workers or machines, if the price of machines falls, demand for labor that can be replaced by machines decreases. Why? Because cheaper machines mean firms are gonna hire machines instead of people. The larger of the two effects, the labor, or the larger of the two effects on labor and capital, determines whether labor and capital are gonna be complements or substitutes. If the scale effect is larger, then we think of labor and capital as complements. If the substitution effect is larger, obviously we think of them as substitutes. Where labor and capital are complements, the scale effect dominates. Where labor, labor and capital are substitutes, the substitution effect dominates. So if the scale effect dominates, then a decrease in the price of capital gives us a rightward shift and increase in labor demand. Right, lower price of capital means you expand, you buy, you use more capital, but you also expand your production, therefore need more workers because they're complements. If the substitution effect dominates, then a decrease in the price of capital means a leftward shift to labor demand. You use for you use uh, machines instead of workers, so you hire fewer workers. So there's a decrease in labor demand. Okay, so in this question, we're looking for a rise in wage, a fall in quantity. Let's just explore each of these options, A, B, C, D, and E in, in turn. A recession reduces the demand for new cars and wages in the aircraft manufacturing industry decreases. Well, the labor demand decreases due to the fall in, due to the recession, right? So if there's less demand for new cars, labor is a derived demand. So if we don't want as many new cars, we don't need as many workers to make those cars. So the labor demand falls. A leftward shift of the demand curve corresponds to fall in price, fall in quantity. So you could draw that for yourself. Draw a leftward shift of demand against a stationary supply. Wage falls, quantity falls. No, that's not what we want. We want a rise in wage and a fall in quantity. What about supply increases? Wages in the aircraft manufacturing industry decrease. So workers leave that industry. They go to the automobile industry because then the wages would be relatively higher. That'd be an increase in labor supply, which would drive down wages, right? So supply increases, wage falls, quantity rises. So the first one, smaller demand for the output good, smaller derived demand for labor. The second one, wages decrease for aircraft, so aircraft workers more willing to supply their labor to automakers, increased labor supply for automakers, okay? In both cases, this fails to match what we are looking for, so it wasn't option A. Option B, 
So the cost of capital used in the production of automobiles increases. The scale effect dominates the substitution effect. Well, here we're going to have labor demand decreasing. So wage falls and quantity falls. How do we know labor demand decreases? Well, the cost of capital used in production of automobiles falls or rises. And so the scale effect and the scale effect dominates the substitution effect. Well, if capital, if machines are more expensive, you buy fewer machines. If the scale effect dominates the substitution effect, workers and machines are complements, which means when you buy less machines, you'll hire fewer workers. Okay, so the wage would fall because we have a decreased labor demand and we'd have a lower quantity. Right, so that's this. The scale effect dominating the substitution effect means that the predominant force or relationship between labor and capital is as complements. When this is true, when the cost of capital rises, we use less capital. Our output's more expensive to produce. We produce and sell less at a given price. As the marginal product of worker falls, so does their marginal revenue product. So following the rational rule for employers, we hire fewer workers. Um, marginal product, uh, marginal revenue product, going through rational rule for employers is consistent with the Stevenson Wolfer's uh, uh, text. When the scale effect is dominant, labor and capital are complements. More capital makes workers more efficient. Less capital makes workers less efficient. Workers need capital to be productive. So here we're going to get fewer workers. Okay, so it wasn't option B. What about option C? We're looking for a rise in wage, a fall in quantity. So here, the Xbox One, PlayStation hit the market. This is going to cause significant increase in the value placed on leisure. Okay, well, if workers would rather play Xbox One and PlayStation than work extra hours or overtime or something like this, this would decrease the labor supply. If supply decreases, whatever is being supplied becomes relatively more scarce. So its price should rise, the wage rises, and then the quantity falls. Yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for to match our explanation. The increased value of leisure means fewer workers are willing to work or workers willing to work fewer hours, so a decreased labor supply. What about, what about if automobile firms adopt a new production technique that increases the marginal productivity of its workers? Well, if workers are more productive, sort of the opposite of what we had before. Rational rule for employers says you'd hire while the, while the, hire while the marginal value of the worker exceeds the marginal cost, right? If the benefit of hiring the worker exceeds the cost of hiring the worker, you'll hire more workers. The marginal value of the worker is gonna be their marginal product. That's the additional output that each worker used is gonna be able to produce, multiply by the output price. So that gives us the marginal revenue product. As the marginal product rises, the marginal revenue product rises, so you'd hire more workers. If workers are more productive, the scale of the output of production would rise, and so you'd need more workers. So if workers are more productive, you'd need more workers, wage would rise and quantity would rise. This is an increase in the labor demand. Well, but that's not what we were looking for. We wanted something that would decrease the labor supply. And so it wasn't option D. So again, back to the question. The one that would, was consistent with an increase in price and a decrease in quantity is a leftward shift of supply. This is the one that gives us a leftward shift of the labor supply. So, okay, go ahead and conclude here.